Hey, I'm Friendly Baron and it's pretty well known that the cars in GTA 5 are usually based off a real life vehicle, and a subset of those are based off movie cars, like the Deluxo in the Back to the Future DeLorean, the Cerberus in Mad Max Fury Road's War Rig, the Vigilante in the 1989 Batmobile, plus the Scramjet from Speed Racer. Less common knowledge is that a few of the missions in single player are also based off the events within a movie. We start here in Marriage Counseling, where Michael saw his wife cheating on him with the tennis coach, so he follows him back to a house that isn't actually his and pulls it down. This sets off the main events of the game, as Michael then returns to a life of crime to pay back Martin Madrazo for tearing down the house. The dragging down of the house is taken from the 1989 movie Lethal Weapon 2. The main character played by Mel Gibson arrives in his truck to a house in the Hollywood Hills up on stilts with the dirt road below. The motivations are different, as in the movie there is a hostage inside and they are trying to free him, so pulling down the house is a distraction while that happens. I will be cutting up the gameplay and movie to match a bit better during this video, like removing some of the scenes showing the shootout going on inside the house during the movie. The game only sees the player's view during this time, but similar actions happen where the tugs slowly shake and break parts off the building until the whole thing comes down. There is a long glamorous scene of everything crumbling down the hill for both the game and movie. This is a great starter to show the kind of inspiration Rockstar takes from movies, where it's not one to one but pretty close, just like how they do cars in game. You could even say for this mission, maybe Michael's character was influenced by the movie, as he's supposedly a big film buff in game and likely would have seen it happen in theaters. Going through the game chronologically, the next instance of film reference comes in Friend Request, where Michael has planted a bomb and a cell phone under Lester's direction, and upon calling Jay Norris during the big press conference, the phone explodes to assassinate him. This is similar to the 2009 Law Abiding Citizen, where a man is trying to get justice for his wife and assassinates the judge in the case with a cell phone bomb as well. The motivations are again completely different, but the idea of a phone call leading to a slightly delayed explosion to the face is the same. We move on to even more crime. In the jewel store heist, Michael, Franklin, and the crew are doing a smash and grab robbery to a high-end store in Rockford Hills, which may give you a clue of which movie it's based off of. They control the crowd with guns and yelling, and have a person counting down a time until they need to leave which in game is based off which hacker you have chosen until the alarm goes off. This movie is Beverly Hills Cop 2, right at the start of the movie. There is a heist of a jewel store where the robbers take control of the customers and staff, then have a team come in and smash all the case to steal as much as they can. The lady in white is counting down, presumably until the alarm goes off or expected police response time. This robbery takes place in Beverly Hills, Los Angeles, which is where the in-game area of Richmond Hills is located, so the location and movie name match up here. They fill their bags as much as possible within the time limit and then head out, just like the game. In the game, you leave the jewel store on motorcycles which differs from Beverly Hills Cop 2. However, as the game has you head into the tunnels for the subway and sewer under Los Santos, that will become similar to another movie. Rockstar's design rushes through the tunnels and eventually ends up jumping out into the river to finish the chase. A small note, if you are new to my channel, I am also one of the top speedrunners for this game. During this section we actually stay on top of the ground instead of going into tunnels as it ends up being much faster. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see how that's done, and for those of you who normally watch my speedrun stuff, don't worry it's not ending or anything, I just like to diversify my video style. The escape into the tunnels is similar to an escape during 2003's The Italian Job. Now in that movie, they head into the tunnels via the subway, which I am slightly surprised Rockstar didn't copy considering they have similar subways nearby. But it ends up being the same destination of the underground and then popping out into the LA River where the chase continues. The movie obviously has cars instead of motorcycles, but there are two bikes chasing them through the tunnels. We'll be seeing more of 2003's Italian Job later in the game, as well as some bits from the 1969 version of the Italian Job as well. During Trevor Phillips Industries, Trevor is meeting possible drug distribution clients when he gets word that one of the rival crews is coming to attack his meth lab, so he locks them in the ice freezer until done, then gets them out after, and the drugged out kid rather enjoys it, but the businessman is rather annoyed. This is similar to The Hangover Part 2, where the gang thought Chang had died, so they put him in a freezer and came to retrieve him later. Turns out he wasn't dead and is rather mad at them. 
Not major plot points in either the game or movie, but crazy Asian guy locked in a freezer is enough to call it a slight bit of inspiration. A bit later in the game, Trevor is attacking the house and meth lab of the O'Neill brothers for taking his business from the guys who were just in the freezer. Trevor lays down gas, then blows up the whole darn house, doing a typical cool guys don't look at explosions walk away. This explosion and walk is similar to the house going bye bye in I Am Number 4, where one of the main characters is blowing up the former house of another to help cover their tracks. The method of explosion is different, gas instead of meth lab, but the wood house splitting apart with the walking to the camera is a match, as well as this character in the movie has invincibility to fire, kind of similar to Trevor's special power of being immune to all damage when used. We join Michael and Trevor in Famer Shame, where they are chasing after Laszlo in his tiny car while they are in a big truck. Luckily for Laszlo, his car has magical rubber banding powers and will always stay ahead of the semi-truck. The chase goes to the streets of Los Santos before eventually jumping into the Ellis River to confront Laszlo after he was making a fool out of Tracy on the TV show. That sequence in game probably comes from Terminator 2 Judgment Day, where a young John Connor is trying to escape from the T-1000 Terminator chasing him. John is in a small vehicle, a red bike, while the Terminator is in a big black semi-truck, just like the game's red Prius and black truck for the chasee and chasers. The chase ends up in the LA River after being on the streets for a while, though eventually the movie ends with the T-800 played by Arnold Schwarzenegger helping John Connor escape for some time. The game has much less destruction going on than the movie, but you get the point. In the Mission 3's company, it's Franklin, Michael, and Trevor's first time working together. The FIB has put them on a job to retrieve a suspect from the IAA skyscraper, where Michael rappels down and then breaks inside, while Franklin provides backup from an adjacent building and Trevor controls the chopper. They extract the target and get away. This has parallels to the 2010-18 movie, where the ragtag group is also set on retrieving someone from a skyscraper. One guy is rappelling down the building while a sharpshooter provides support from the building across the street, just like Rockstar did in game. The shootout and preceding escape are different, but the idea is similar. In the movie, flashbangs are used to confuse the enemy instead of the sniper from across the way. The target is taken by the infiltrating repeller, however in the movie this is a silly sequence of putting a parachute on him, throwing him out the window, and then catching said parachute with the legs of a helicopter. Not even Rockstar was up to recreating that, which tells you how far-fetched it is, but movie's gonna movie. The next two references come from the same long cutscene in Did Somebody Say Yoga, where Michael gets drugged by Jimmy, goes on what looks like an acid trip of some kind, then ends up in the park. In the game, a bunch of monkeys are chanting around him as he's then lifted to the alien ship. The monkeys in a circle probably come from Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, with the apes chanting around the monolith. I can't really provide more context than that, you gotta see the movie. Michael is brought up to the aliens and then let back down, where he falls back down the Los Santos with an upbeat song playing. This part comes from the Big Lebowski. The dude is knocked out and has a dream where he's floating over Los Angeles in the same bright nighttime with another upbeat song playing over before eventually falling back down to continue the dream sequence. This next movie inspiration comes from one of my all-time favorites, so let's set up the game's mission first. In the Blitzplay heist, Trevor is watching from above and helps Michael time using a garbage truck to bring an armored car to a stop in the road after the team of characters has been doing lots of setup missions to get these large vehicles in the outfits. Once the bank truck is stopped, Franklin rams into it with a tow truck from the side to disable the vehicle and disorient the guards. C4 explosives are used to blow it open, and Michael retrieves a document from the truck while Franklin keeps guard. The player has the choice to leave the security guards alive, or execute them. The movie Heat starts with this exact style of heist. Instead of a garbage truck, a stolen ambulance is used to bring the bank truck to a halt without them thinking anything is wrong at first. A large tow truck is applied to the side of the armored car to smash it onto its side as well. 
I removed a fair bit of shots from the heat footage in order to speed things up, but it's an incredible movie for the amount of time it takes setting up its crime sequences, and the realistic feel of the shootouts being executed at a normal pace, but by expert marksmen along with great sound design. The movie also uses explosives to blow the truck open in order for a document to be retrieved, and both the game and movie it's bearer bonds inside, which are basically an anonymous way to have large, transferable funds on paper. Both the game and movie have a moment of dialogue relating to the truck's guards, and in the movie they are actually killed due to one of the bank robbers going a bit crazy. In the movie, they have a timer for the police response and escape by then, but this is where the game diverges, as the player must complete a shootout before being able to escape. After Blitzplay, the next mission also fits into this video. I Fought the Law has Franklin posing as a racer, and Michael and Trevor posing as cops who pull them over, then steal the cars and take them back to Devin Weston and Los Santos. Now, it's a light reference, but this little cutscene and the outfits relate to the late 70s TV show Chips, about two motorcycle officers and basically a buddy cop TV show. California Highway Patrol officers also rarely worked in pairs, so seeing a pair of riders also calls to the show. In the mission Caída Libre, Michael is again working for Martin Madrazo and is sent to the observatory to use this fancy gun in a van to shoot down a plane carrying someone who has betrayed Martin. The player shoots the engine of the plane and it is slowly brought down the crash after losing altitude for a while. Another little speedrun note, you can actually shoot the engine three times at once instead of three separate times to bring the plane down right away. The movie SWAT also uses a high-powered gun with electronic aiming in the back of a van to bring down an aircraft. It is a helicopter instead of a plane, but the engine is shot out the sever hydraulic lines just the same. The helicopter was going to be used for prisoner transport, so this makes them instead transport on the roads where he can be retrieved by his criminal friends. It'd be a crime if I didn't include James Bond here, and the classic JB700 is a stand-in for the Aston Martin in James Bond. The car has the look, and Franklin poses as a spy in order to steal a spy car, then once clear of the studio, removes the actress who is trying to stop him with the little red button. Specifically, the car is meant to be the DB5 used in Goldfinger with the handy dandy ejector seat. Flying the biplane is Trevor in Minor Turbulence, the game has you fly up to the back of the big cargo plane, and then fly right into it, where Trevor jumps out before the plane, and tons of cargo gets sucked out. The mission is unrealistic, the physics barely makes sense, and there's like 5 minutes of boring flying buildup to technically escape radar detection before in the clear. All of that is exactly why this scene is taken from a 90s action movie called Terminal Velocity. In the movie, the main character is being flown by another pilot in a biplane to catch up to a big cargo plane, as the heroine is being kept hostage on the large aircraft, and is about to be thrown out the back while in the trunk of a car because they can't just throw her out normally, right? So Charlie Sheen's character hops into the back of the plane to have a short fight with the bad guys. It's not as drastic as flying into the plane, but the similarity of a biplane and a large jet is super clear. Later in the mission, Trevor has to escape from the falling plane, and it's an option to take this jeep and drive it out. That's probably the intended option for two reasons. One, in the game it's a gold medal objective to drive the jeep. But also, back to the movie, the hero uses the car to fight the enemy and pull him out of the plane for a mid-air fight. And guess what? He wins! Then he has to get the love interest out of the trunk and save her too. The game is a bit less active, all that kinda happens is you jump out later to pull your chute. Anyways, that's all I have for this episode. I'm gonna split it up into two videos cause I don't wanna make a video that's 30 minutes long. As well, if you know any references I haven't yet mentioned, please let me know. Specifically, I'm looking at the missions for GTA 5, but any vehicles or other stuff is fine too. I really like making this kind of video, and probably will make one for the games referenced in GTA 5 and the other Rockstar titles, and even non-Rockstar games if there are good examples. Most of my knowledge came from my own watching of terrible 80s and 90s movies, and help from a friend in sourcing these movies. Thanks for watching, and don't worry, I'll be doing speedrun stuff still too, and if you are subscribed or would like to subscribe, I will see you in my next series of images with a related audio track. That's fancy speak for video.